Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Cybersecurity Ranger. Before I begin the video, I will request you to please subscribe to the channel. So my today's video is about persistence. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to go through the PowerPoint. I uh, just want to give you an idea what persistent persistence is. So persistence basically means that once you have exploited a system <clears throat> and you have gained access to the system, now you want to maintain the access to the system despite of the system reboots, loss of credentials, uh, vulnerability patch, whatever happens, you basically want to make sure that you still have the access to the system so you don't need to exploit it again and again. Now, how we can achieve persistence, there are several methods by which persistence can be achieved. Um, in Microsoft Windows, there are certain registry keys which are very important that can be used to maintain persistence. Some of them are listed here. So you have the run, run once, you have active setup shells, and this is basically the path to this registry key. Um, you have the app in it, DLL, user in it, LSA packages. So I'm not going to go into the details if you're interested. Uh, probably I'll make another video on to explain uh, theoretically what persistence is. Now, the idea here is, for example, what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to use this run registry um, <clears throat> key in order to um, make sure that I have a connection to the system, even if the attacker reboots, so I don't need to exploit it again and again. Um, because if you keep on exploiting the system again and again, it probably is going to get detected, right? <clears throat> so what the attackers, they do is that they will place the malicious file somewhere on the system in a directory and then add the path of that file into the registry key. So now the run and run once uh, registries, they basically run registry. Uh, it means that if you have placed a registry key here, uh, every time the system reboots or starts, it is going to uh, execute whatever software application or exploit you have placed. Same goes for the act active setup, LSA packages, um, shell extensions, etc. Now, this is one way of persistence. The other way is also that you can achieve persistence through startup folders, browser helper objects, uh, DLL search order, order hijacking, which is quite interesting. So what normally happens in the Windows is that um, whenever uh, the uh, the application executes, it actually looks for the DLL files. Uh, now the DLL files basically, um, um, they some of them they come uh, preloaded with the Windows. Uh, like for example, you have multiple applications that use the uh, print functionality, right? So the print DLL comes with the Windows, so all those applications, the developers, they don't need to uh, write code for uh, printing, uh, you know, uh, functionality. So they just simply access the DLL file from the Windows, and then once this DLL file is loaded, they get the print functionality. Well, now, the idea is that when the Windows, it starts looking for the uh, for a certain DLL, it searches uh, uh, in a certain order. So it first starts with the known DLL, um, which is basically registry uh, listed in the registry. Then it goes uh, to the directory where the application was loaded. If the DLL find, if it finds the DLL in this location, it will load the DLL. Otherwise, it will go to the system32 directory and tries to find out the DLL there. If it finds good, if it doesn't find, it goes to the system directory. If it doesn't find in the system directory, it will go to the root directory and current working directory, so on. And finally, the last resort is the environment path variables, right? Now, imagine that uh, the DLL file of a certain uh, functionality or application is actually somewhere in the system file, which basically means that if we place a malicious DLL with the same name in system 32 directory, it means that rather than executing the original DLL file, which was located in system 32, it is going to load the malicious DLL file, and then you will basically have the access to the system, right? So let's now jump into the demonstration rather than boring you with the 
theory part. Um, so what, like I said, what I'm going to do today is that I will uh, use the uh, run registry key in order to maintain persistence. So what I'm using here in this scenario is that I have a Windows machine. The method is same for all the windows. Uh, and I'm using Kali Linux um, as an attacker's machine. Now, I already have a metaprider session, which means that we assume in this attack that you already gained access to the system and uh, you want to maintain access uh, to the system despite of the reboots and all that. If you want to see how Windows 10 or Windows 7 or any other Windows uh, can be exploited, you can watch my video in the um, Metasploit series. So I already have the access to the system and I have a metaprider session. What I'm going to do now is that I, first of all, I'm going to upload a file by using the upload command. The file that I want to upload is a malicious file, ranger.exe, and I'm going to place it, let's just say, you can actually use any directory in the Windows um, where you want to place the file, you just need to know the path. Uh, you just need to make sure that you use uh, double backslash instead of the single backslash. This is how uh, the metaprider works. And um, now if you want to keep it hidden somewhere, you probably can upload it into the Windows uh, System32 directories, um, you know, or any other location which is not very obvious, right? That, that the... Uh, the, that the target or the victim is going to find out the file. So I'm just placing it for the sake of demonstration into the user's directory. So I'll press enter. You can see here that the file has been uploaded into the user's directory, right? Now, the next thing I need to do is to add a registry key for this particular and give it the path that, you know, every time the system reboots, it executes my malicious file. So in order to do that, I will use um, reg set value hyphen k. This is the path through the registry, the run registry. So you need to know exactly uh, the path, and it's it's not that hard to find out. The Windows registry paths are quite known, and you can actually just also look into the Windows itself as well. That, for example, you can use uh, registry editor and you'll find out the registry keys uh, that are there, right? So the specific registry that I'm trying to upload this file to is the run registry. So you can find it in the HKLM software, Microsoft. So let me just show you. Um, local machine, software, um, sorry, I think. Software in Microsoft. Where is it? Okay, so not the system software. And then we go to the Microsoft. Inside the Microsoft, we need to go to Windows current version, right? So let me find out Windows. Right, and in Windows, you'll have current version. Come on. Software, Microsoft. Windows, current version. In current version, you're going to find out run. Right, so run. Now, this is where you can see here I have a couple of applications uh, which are already in this registry um, location, which means that every time the system reboots, these applications, they get uh, automatically uh, get executed, right? So this is what I'm trying to do now here is that on the target system, I'm adding, using the metaprider, I'm adding the um, into this uh, path. Uh, hyphen V is the name of, uh, you know, the application that I'm uploading. Hyphen D is for the data. So the data that I'm 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 uploading into this registry key is C colon backslash Windows, uh, and this is where I uploaded the file, right? So this is the path of the file. So I just need to uh, put it in the single quotes uh, to add this registry key. Now, remember also again 
uh, when you add the key with, with hyphen k, you have to use the double backslash in the path, right? If you don't use the double backslash, it's going to give you an error. Now you can see here that it has successfully set the registry key into this location. You can actually verify if the uh, if this uh, registry key is um, is actually set. You can actually use a reg QD value hyphen k the same path and then the uh, name of the uh, the name that I gave right. So you can see here, it shows that basically the registry key is set and the data the data inside this registry key is uh, ranger.exe, right? So now the target machine is currently running. I have access to this system. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to reboot the machine. But when I reboot the machine, you should know that you should have a listener listening, right? So which means that I'm going to open another uh, terminal in MSF console. I can actually use the same one. So let me just use the same one instead of starting another. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to exit from this session, right? So let's just assume that I lost the connection. Or in fact, what I can do is I will restart the machine and when I restart the machine, you can see that the MetaPressor session has closed, right? So now it just shows you back that it's there, but it's actually died. Now I just need to exploit it again, it means I need to run the reverse handler again. And again, I have made this video previously how to run the reverse handler. And now on the target system, you can see that the system is actually booting up. So we'll just keep an eye on the terminal, that what happens on the terminal. So when I reboot, when I log into this machine, the file path that I placed in the run registry key, it gets executed automatically. And I should have a session here automatically and I don't need to exploit it for. I'm just going to log into the machine. As soon as I log in, you should see that on the left-hand side, it is going to give me the reverse connection. Let's see. That's strange. Didn't work, I guess. Let me just double check. The file that I uploaded was in the users folder. The file was uploaded successfully. Let me go ahead and check the... Uh, so C and then this is the location where I uploaded the file. Let me go ahead and check the registry. Reg edit. So my registry key was also added. As you can see it here, it wasn't there before. Mm, oh, okay. So I think I made a mistake. So you can see here the path that I gave, I gave the windows slash ranger.exe. However, I uploaded the file um, into the users folder, right? So what I'm going to do is that I can do it again from the metapreter or I can do it here as well, right? So it doesn't really matter. Um, I need to exploit the machine again. So what I'm gonna do is that, let me just open it up. So the only mistake that I made was that the path was wrong. All right, so let's go back. Okay, so I'm just going to change the path because I uploaded it in, into the users folder. So users slash ranger.exe, just going to change its name. 
call it uh, ABC, doesn't matter, right? So let's set the value again. And let's query it again to find out if it has been added. So now you can see the correct path where I uploaded the file. Now let's just reboot the machine once again and see what happens. Reboot. So the MetaPress session has died. I'm going to run the reverse handler again. Remember, I'm not exploiting it. I'm just running the reverse handler. The exploitation will be done automatically when the machine reboots, right? So let's keep an eye on it now. All right, so the machine is asking for the password. I just want to show that when I log in, it basically should give me the reverse connection, right? Okay. And there you can see on the left-hand side, as soon as the machine logged in, a user logged in, it actually gave me the... Um, the reverse connection. And if I go ahead and write PS, you can see here that the ranger.exe should be running. Let's find out. Okay. So you can see it here in the process list, the ranger.exe which was placed in the user's uh, directory is now running. So this is one way that the persistence can be achieved. Like I said, uh, in the presentation, there are plenty of other ways through which uh, persistence can be achieved on the target system. Um, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and have a nice day.